Okay, where are you feeling? The business summit or the regular motel? Regular motel! Why are you up there, Scott? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> nice. After a long, exhausting day of sitting in a car, you're ready to turn in for the night. Time to choose a thingy. Watch TV. Order pizza. Get ready for bed. Hmm. Brian the zombie. Bedtime. Alright, preparing for bed. You decide to get a onesie, giggling in the bathroom. Hey there, Hazel. Oh, yeah. It's Have we seen this? So many times. Oh, it's the skin. Okay. It's the I keep Eldritch forgetting which ones we've done. I'll remember. Don't you worry. Alright, how long you want to rub the skin? Five minutes. Pat some lotion on it and you're done. And they're angry. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we gained some mind, lose some hype. Yep. Damn, I'm not gonna get my stamina ending. Gothic Manor sounds fun. If I drank gas, would I become a car? How do you want to become a car anyway? I don't know. Alright, driving along, doing a. Ooh, that looks cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brian the zombie. This is gonna be in my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, exquisite banquet, the dramatic chamber music, the history transpiring through the walls. I don't think we've done this one yet. This is a real-life gothic manor, so you can surely find centuries of wisdom and misery in the form of wailing specters haunting the place. In fact, the ghost of a Victorian woman is coming out of your wall right now, sobbing hysterically. Hey, fellow specter! I'm Holly. I love your accessories. Ghostly chains of torment are in this year. I can feel it. Hello, the ghost says between sobs. My name is Constance. You haven't seen my husband, have you? Our souls have been separated since I died centuries ago. I just had my thirteenth child and was feeling quite ill, but he gave me the best thing he could. Emotional support? An orgasm? No, he hired a bloodletter to flush the demons out of my blood, obviously. What's an orgasm? A shadow appears on the edge of your vision and whispers, I'm Theodore and I was killed by polio. It's a far more demonic and wretched disease than bl demon blood. Whack. You know, we have vaccines for that now. Uh, vaccines? I don't know what that is, but it sounds scary and unholy and not something I'd ever give to my children. Well, since you obviously aren't a source of good parental advice, can you at least provide me with cool ghost advice? I'm kind of new to it. Are you? Like, you know how most people die to become a ghost, but some people are born ghosts? How does that work exactly? Can only humans turn into ghosts, or are there such things as monster ghosts? And how do you zombies fit into everything? Uh. Also, how do ghost powers work? I've figured out some of them on my own, but I'm sure you guys could teach me better ones. Ghost powers? What makes you think we have ghost powers? Being a ghost is a curse, not something to be enjoyed. Oh. Polly looks crushed. No way are you letting her excitement be squashed by jerks who don't even know what an orgasm is. You suggest a cool ghost power for her to learn. Do lots of pottery to gain control over when you're intangible and when you're not. Learn the ghost power of teaching valuable life lessons to cynical old men during the holidays. I just want to point out, I did watch a show called What We Do in the Shadows, and it's about a bunch of vampires and like a mockumentary thing. Yeah, yeah. They did have an episode where they kind of questioned like, well, wait, we're unholy monsters of the undead. We're not alive. We don't have souls. What happened to our human souls when we were human? So they do a seance and actually like bring their own ghosts back. And it goes like this. It was weird, but fun. From the afterlife. So what do you prefer, ghost or Christmas Carol? Don't worry, he's Brian. I mean, this is your choice. I know, I'm just trying to take suggestions because I like them both. Um, do we want a Swayze or do we want to like get weird with that like one D? Remember when we did the D&D &D thing? Yes. The, uh, yeah, that was fun. On the channel, go watch it. Go find it. What was it called? Oh, um... 
So I remember, uh, I think it was like, um, was it Deck the Halls? Maybe. I don't know. You know what? We're talking about it enough. Let's do this. What? That sounds more like a hobby than a power. Do you really have to do this? Yep, the ghosts grab you and teleport you into a wealthy old man's bedroom. Wait, we can teleport? Can you teach me how to do that instead? Nope, that's nope, that's not what we asked for, the ghost says. Now go wake up that man and scare him straight. Ugh, fine. Wake up, asshole! Hey! The old man cries, who are you? I'm the ghost you done fucked up. Your afterlife is gonna suck if you don't get your shit together soon. Wait, you mean being a bad person has consequences? Damn it, I was betting on that not being the case. And then I guess starting tomorrow I'll stop using this special whip to raise morale among my workers. Would that suffice? I guess, sheesh. Can't... I can see how this is an important job for us ghosts to do. Polly's a natural of this. The ghosts take you to another old man's house to keep practicing. Hey, old fart. According to my list, you need to stop eating children alive? What? Hmm. Yeah, you might be right about that, the old man says thoughtfully. I always suspected that eating them was not okay, but it was this ghostly encounter that finally convinced me. Thank you, a oh wise ghost. Uh, you're welcome? And so you spend the rest of the night visiting houses and gaining soul, correcting the ways of shitty old men. You lose two hype because your best idea of a ghost power was imparting moral lessons. Wow. Well, that's unfortunate. So, city under attack or the hole? Um, uh, city under attack. We are not checking the speed limit. Burning buildings, screaming people, eardrum shattering roars, and all that sort of wonderful, oh fun, fun, fun times. All right, fight the kaiju. We did get that kaiju bit. At we one did. Point. Uh, I think we can get out of. I mean, there might be other options to it, but I don't know. What do you feel? Uh, what option did we take? We took accept our fate. I think we did that once, and we also did that. So back to the city. We might have, but I can't remember. I don't think we did. Okay. I mean, I don't remember it, but I haven't been here for all of this, so... True. You guys have decided today isn't the day to play the hero. Better to take the more practical approach and help people escape the kaiju, but there's a problem. Everyone! Get your butts out of the city now! I don't know if you noticed, but there's a fucknormous kaiju here to kill you! Oh great, huffs a nearby woman. Don't tell me you 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 kids have fallen for it too. Fallen for what? Did somebody do a prank on us and I didn't notice? We'll get those suckers next time. It's not a prank, you moron. It's a conspiracy. The government only wants you to believe there's kaiju destroying our town and eating our loved ones. It's obviously a nationwide cover-up for all the radioactive chemicals they put in the vaccines these days. You sheep will need to open your eye. Okay, this is gonna be a lot. Hazel, these people suck. Are you sure we can't just let the kaiju eat them? It's tempting, but you already decided to be the bigger person today. You just need to find a force stronger than common sense to drive these citizens out. Build a super long water slide that leads to the outside. Gentrify the city, forcing the remaining population to move away. I know that I would have done this at some point. Yeah, I, I do the, the water slide. Yeah. You get down to business, opening an overpriced hipster business, buy up some foreclosed houses, turn them into a Whole Foods, then you open up a 15th floor Froyo restaurant in the old glue factory. You want to employ thousands, but all those glue tubes are perfect for dispensing expensive topics. Hazel, check it out. Scott and I opened a healing crystal store chain. We're just reselling all the rubble from the buildings the kaiju destroyed. Yeah, and I've been digging in the rubble and finding a lot of cool jewelry and money and stuff people left for me to find. We can sell that stuff too. Soon the only people who can still afford to live here are either very wealthy or undead, aka the only people that aren't being affected by the enraged kaiju. You save the population from, physical kai from the physical kaiju, but you also introduce them to the greater metaphorical kaiju of poverty and homelessness. It's a double-edged sword and it makes you shed a tear. A tear that you dry with a thousand dollar bill you made selling dumb hipsters shiny rocks. 
We did good today, gang. I've been thinking, do we really need to get back on the road? I kind of love all the success we're having here. I agree. I like living in the city. It's fun when you have all the money in the, and run a business based on digging expensive stuff out of the dirt. Truth. Maybe it's time we grew up a little. I could give up pranking and partying for a life of for life as a big city girl. I can't think of any reason why not. Then you watch the kaiju's enormous foot come down and demolish all of your businesses in one seismic stomp. Oh, duh. I completely forgot about the whole, that whole thing. Oh well. Back in the car, everyone. You leave the kaiju's city in the dust, losing one, two soul, but gaining two money. Well, at least I got my mind thing, I think. Bus stop. I'm first. No, but I want to go bus stop. Hmm, well that's interesting, because I might want to trade Brian. Mm -hmm. You can always kick me out with your money. I know. I will kick you out. Oh. <gasps> yes. <laughs> kick you out again. Hmm. All right, noodle slop shop, yada yada. What can I trade here that'd be any good? Trade that. Nuclear launch codes are good for your mind. Hmm. I'm gonna do it. Yep, cool. All right, you gonna talk to Brian or change hitchhiker? Uh, change hitchhiker. Aravi or Damien? I'll take Aravi. Okay. Brian left the party. You invite Aravi to join your road trip. You seriously think I want to travel with you? I mean, I guess I will. But not because I like you or anything. Inventory hoarder, you gotta be ready for adventure. Robby keeps buying all sorts of magical artifacts with your money. Next week, every turn, you'll gain magic and lose money. Oh no. Um, we don't want a magic ending, so we're gonna trade her. <laughs> okay, cool. And that sucks. Okay. Damn it, we're tied. <laughs> Alright, time for dares. Choose to be a cautious planner at the next at the rest stop. Car. Mind is well, I'm not doing that. Magic is high. Nope. Guess I'll do that one, because that's doable. Um. I mean, I feel like we've already done that one. Uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Easy money. Yeah. Alright. Now we just gotta watch to make sure our money doesn't drop too low and our magic doesn't go too high. You mean our which soul? It will. No, 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 our magic, because you're, we're trading money for magic every mm. turn. Thank the Ravi. Honestly, would have been great to have when we were looking for that magic ending. Yeah. Mm. You know, we haven't been on the picnic spot very often. Do do do, driving carelessly, knowing nothing will happen. The car has stopped. Okay. Um. Yeah, the mine thing. We're just going for the basics. We're not doing the long thing for now. So. Let's not worry about it. The sun is shining, birds are singing, blah, 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 blah. Alright. Picnic baskets. Uh, have a nice picnic. Play fetch. I feel like we played fetch. Yeah, we have played fetch. Hmm. Whew. Yeah, we'll have a picnic. You've got the picnic basket of food, you've got the nice day, and you've got the friends to enjoy it with. You just need to decide where to spread your checkered blanket. Don't worry, guys, I know that. I know how to find the perfect picnic spot. We learned all about this in Monster Scouts. First step is to make sure you spot your spot has nobody else's pee on it, because it's rude to picnic on a, on a spot someone else already claimed. The perfect picnic is also best enjoyed with three to six friends. Good thing we're somewhere in that number. 
Looks like for a place on a look for a place on a high hill with good air. I'll lick my finger to test the wind while we walk. I've seen people do it in movies. Whatever you say, bud. I'll just follow you around until you find a place we can sit. You indulge Scott in his picnic spot hunting antics. You finally find a patch of grass deemed suitable, and you dig into sandwiches and potato salad. <laughs> Oh no, I forgot the most important step of finding a picnic spot, bear-proofing the surrounding area. Roar! Whoa! Is that a bear with a gun? That's my second favorite excuse for how I died! Oh no, this bear isn't just stealing the picnic, it's robbing the picnic! This is a stick-up! You can have the picnic, Mr. Bear. We don't want any trouble. Roar. The bear doesn't seem sold on those terms. He gestures the gun at Polly's bottle of honey mead. What, you want to steal my booze too? No way, Winnie the Party Pooper. Over Zoe's dead body. Why You're not I? willing to die for mead. Intercede and save the day before this bear lights you all up. The bear's behavior is probably due to nurture, not nature. Try to learn what circumstances brought it to a life of crime and help him from a place of empathy. Get this bear the only thing bears got. Okay, we did the taxi thing before. I do remember this a little bit. Let's go with this one. Using your powers of empathy, you appeal to the bear's emotional turmoil. You tell him that you get it. You really do. He may want this picnic, but he doesn't need it. These sandwiches and sodas won't bury his inner pain. But you can give this bear what he really needs. A bear hug. <laughs> the bear remembers being the runt of the family, neglected by his emotionally distant bear dad for being scrawny and weak. He reflects on trying and failing to find a job. Nobody's hiring bears these days. He's struggling to make ends meet. His bear wife berates him for being unable to provide for their cubs. He can barely afford the rent of their cave. Damn forced gentrification. He wandered the forest after a particularly nasty marital dispute. He was hungry, frustrated, filled with rage at an unfair world. The bear remembers passing a box of firearms with free guns for bears written on the side. He knew what he had to do. A tear rolls down the bear's snout as you hold him. He pats you on the back and walks back into the forest for some much needed introspection time. So you solve the bear's problems with compassion and understanding? Lame. I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate you saving my mead. Oh, and Scott's life too. But that was objectively the least interesting way you could have gotten that gun out of our faces. Sheesh, a simple thank you. Thanks, Zoe. Would go wouldn't go amiss here. You know in your heart you did the right thing, and despite losing two hype and gaining two soul for helping the bear. Okay. Spa. Experimental prison. Spa. Uh, experimental prison. Spa. Spa it is. Oh, can you relax? We knew vaca- who knew vacations could be so stressful? You know, for a vacation, this road trip has been surprisingly stressful. A spa sounds like the perfect yeah. thing to help you relax before you get your final get to your final destination. The question is, how do you want to chill out? Hot springs, yoga, yoga. class, digital detox. As you're browsing the different yoga classes that are available, you run into your friend Milo. Hello, darling. Are you are you joining a yoga class too? Yeah. Do you know if they have any expert level yoga classes? Like one for someone whose yoga high score is over 2,000? Ooh, or maybe there's some sort of competitive yoga doing team that you can join. What? Are you two sure you know how yoga works? Of course we do. Polly and I are yoga masters with an S. Yoga is our shit. We learned the North American rules at Spooky Academy. Wait. Like how, like how to score 180 yoga points by catching the, the gong with your feet. And I learned some of the advanced NSFW yoga poses from Master Downward Doggy Style on fans exclusively. I bet they don't teach you the make a child pose in any of these vanilla classes. They definitely don't. <sighs> I'd better educate you two on actual yoga before anyone from Yoga Mont, Mont Gra Moment Graham sees us together and we and my image as a worldly well centered potty is ruined. Milo pauses to post a selfie with the bonsai tree in caption less than three zen less for three than three. Anyway, this spa has the best teachers around. Whose class do you want to take? Alright. 
Brad Fomet, the goat yoga instructor. He'll teach you everything you need to know if you just sign here. Sergeant Relax, the stern soldier lauded for her merits in combat against stress. As interesting as that one is. Oh, well, well, we're getting mined anyway, so what do you want to lose? Your soul or your height? Um... Or maybe that's stamina. I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll lose hype with the one on the right. Um, one on the left might actually... It will lose us soul, but we have more soul. Okay, you wanna go with that? Yeah. Goat yoga? Is that a real thing? I think so? Yep, it's real, it's weird, and it's trendy, so therefore it's a perfect selfie opportunity. I love it. But it says the price of the class is our immortal soul. Is that worth it? To have a cute baby goat poop on my back? Of course it's worth it. Yeah, what they said, says Brad Fomet, who's suddenly appeared in a cloud of locusts. You won't miss your soul when you're doing downward dog under the uh, adorable hooves of a tiny goat. Just sign here, you're blood, and you're ready for yoga. Okay, but like... Our whole souls is a little overpriced. I never give up my whole soul on the first class. Me either. That's why I was going to pay with this lawyer's soul I reaped this morning. It was going to hell anyway, so who cares how I get how I get it there? Hmm, fine. What if I only charge you two soul for the first class? Call it a new member discount. Cool, I love coupons. Yeah, fuck it. You've lost parts of your soul for dumber reasons. Why not lose a little more to stretch with some goats? You take the class and the goats' creepy horizontal pupils and tendency to poop wherever they want are as endearing as you hope you gain to mind. Alright, well, we're getting there. Charming Village National Park. Hmm. Charming Village. All of these are us losing shape. Yeah, but I go here. We'll try the one that we don't know. I'm refreshed, refreshed and ready for chaos. Hell yeah. All right, reserving nature and things of that sort. Let us pick some mushrooms. You're about 30 minutes into your hike when Scott apparently can't take it anymore. Man, I'm starving. Isn't there anything to eat in this lush, beautiful forest? Ah, uh, hello, friends. It's good to see you. Well, you should be wary. I can hear the growling of some great beast somewhere on the trail. Hey, Moss Man, don't worry, that's just my stomach. I haven't seen a burger restaurant on this trail yet, and I'm getting pretty hungry. Oh, well, I don't know about burgers, but I know a great natural food source nearby if you need a snack. Moss leads you to a fallen tree covered with mushrooms. Behold, my friend, Fungus Vivi. They're succulent, they're savory. They're alive! Of course we're alive! Giggled the sentient mushrooms. We're the sweetest parasitic fungi in the whole forest! You guys seem gullible, I mean nice. You should inhale our spores so we can live in your brains and be best friends forever! No thanks. I bet those spores would taste great with some sautéed onions and chives, though. But isn't eating something that's sentient and still alive kind of wrong? It definitely is! It'd be much more humane to let us germinate in your brains! I don't know. What do you think, Zoe? Should we inhale the spores or eat the mushrooms? Uh, how about neither? Nope. You should know the rules by now, Boo. Pick a wacky outcome and suffer the consequences. Are we eating or inhaling? You know what they say. When you live with mushroom parasitizing your brain, you're never truly alone. Hey, the shrooms want to live rent-free in your brain, but you want them to live rent-free in your risotto you're having for dinner tonight. Fuck them. I feel like we did that. Gain stamina, lose uh, stamina. However, know. parasitizing our brain will make us lose mind. Au contraire, there was a different one that had losing mind. You could have two so things I losing don't... mind. Yeah, there could be two things. Unless we gain mind by being part of a hive mind. I mean, it's fine, your turn, I'll, so your decision. Fine, I'll protect my brain. Excellent choice. 
Funky's Vivi's natural smoky flavor pairs well with a good risotto. No, please don't eat us. We can't see the enemy of being eaten. Well, you should have thought of that before you decided to be so delicious. Hang on. What was my... Oh, I gotta be a cautious planner at some point. Cool. All right, we gained some stamina. Okay. Listening to screams. We're definitely gonna lose some soul. Okay. We're listening to them burn in our stomachs. Uh, should this mushroom be screaming, Don't eat me! Oh, I can do that! Oh no, don't eat me! Don't put me in your big, moist mouth and devour me! Oh, you beautiful pile of flesh! Ah. Uh, they're still gonna take over. We're still losing our mind. This is weird. Oh, this one's in a war. Ew. Yep, shouldn't have known. I'm happy I'm full now, but I don't like it. Don't worry, Scott. We fulfilled that one weird mushroom sexual fantasy, so this was actually a good deed. Oh, okay, that's a relief. You're content to let Scott be happy, but you know better. Losing soul. Alright, Animal Sanctuary. Abandoned Village. Uh, more mind. More mind. Where did everyone go? Maybe they're all in the bathroom. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!